when a problem presents itself, you almost need to flick yourself into survival mode. So you're almost purging your mind of everything apart from you and the water. The only person that can get you out of that situation is yourself. What's up guys? Um, I can't quite believe I'm starting the vlog this week by saying we're in Scotland. We have just arrived right here in the Muller Galloway and one thing that kept us all going was oh, could you imagine what it would feel like to get to Scotland? But I didn't realise how big Scotland was. But when you're about to swim around it, you, you very quickly become aware of the dimensions of Scotland. Basically, Scotland is just a completely different beast. It's stunning, the landscapes are amazing, uh, but the moment you pause and start taking all of that in is, is also the same moment where you're probably just going to get slapped in the face with waves or you're just going to be sitting in the middle of a storm for a few days. And that's exactly why me and Matt put a few hours aside yesterday. We had tidal maps, weather reports, and we just wanted to sit there and look at the lay of the land and really just assess what sort of a beast we were dealing with. I'm sort of teaching Matt about the sports science aspect of the whole Great British Swim, so I'm talking about lactic threshold, VO2, nutritional principles, and on the same flip side of that, Matt's there teaching about tides, currents, and things that I had no idea about. And I think that's really, really important just because the whole Great British Swim, although it's called a swim, it's a massive partnership just between the swimmer and, and the captain. And Certainly Scotland is going to be a testament to that because you could be the best swimmer in the world But you're not even going to make it out of the Hebrides if you don't understand tides and currents Obviously the Great British Swim has this huge Intellectual aspect where you need to understand the sports science and the sort of sailing science of it But I get a lot of questions with people asking about motivation as well, which is as you can imagine just as big if not a bigger part because you have to be motivated to get up at you know two o'clock in the morning and put on a cold, clammy wetsuit and make peace with the fact that you're, you're probably going to be stung in the face for the next few hours by jellyfish. And I was actually lucky enough to catch up with a good friend of mine, Anthony Middleton, just to talk about the mental challenge of this whole adventure. And Anthony, I mean, you know, he's a military legend. So he's a foremost expert in just mental fortitude and just coping with hardship over so many days. When a problem presents itself, you almost need to flick yourself into survival mode. Yeah. Overcome that problem or that challenge and then crack on again by yourself. That makes sense. So you're almost yeah. purging your mind of everything apart from you and the water. So you almost go numb to it. Like you're not thinking about friends, family. There's quite often people will say, oh, you know, Think positive and mm, you know, yeah, but you're yeah. saying no, just get feral. It's the only way. It's right. the only way because something that you're doing is not normal. So you need to forget about everything else and like I said, have that animalistic sort of approach where it's just vision yourself in the water by yourself. The only person that can get you out of that situation is yourself. So it's almost that mindset where you're just fighting pulling against your own physical capability. Yeah. And your mind is so powerful and it's worst case scenario, i.e. losing your life. Yeah, then yeah. you'll find that you'll be able to achieve incredible things. It's a case of just, just isolating yourself with that moment in that zone to get the job done. It's kind of saying like, whatever thought comes into your head, is this helping me swim around Great Britain? If yeah. no, then yeah. just chop it. If 100%. it does, then I might mull it over. Yeah. But otherwise, I like yeah. what you said, caveman, primitive, yeah. feral. Yeah. Just kind of switch it on. Yeah. Man, swim, yeah. man, yeah. stop, no, no. Yeah. eat, yeah. No, sleep, it's true. done. It's done. But on the flip side of that, I don't think you can do the whole Great British Swim angry. You can't grit your teeth for the whole way round. And my theory around this is as follows. There's a lot of studies that will look at how your psychology actually interacts with your immune system, so your body's defense mechanism. And if you're basically, you're swimming angry, you know, cortisol, body stress hormone goes through the roof and all sorts of uh, biochemical reactions will go on inside the body that will mean that your immune system is suppressed and you're more susceptible to illness. Now, the very fact that I've got over a hundred days to survive around the Great British Coast means I really can't afford a day to be ill. So when a lot of people see me being very smiley and then sort of cheerful, that's one one, I think it's important for motivation, but two, just in terms of your physiology, that, that biochemical reactions going on inside the body, studies show 
it's better to swim with a smile and rather than just kind of swimming with your bottom lip out, swimming angry. You can, and I, there are times when I will swim angry. I'll swim feral and I'm just numb and nothing matters. I'm not even thinking. But on the other side, I would say 80% of the whole swim is done with a smile. One, for motivation, but two, actually because of sports science, it makes sense to swim with a smile. Coming to the end of a pretty tiring night swim, 12.30, we all had to wake up and then um, uh, one in the morning food for Ross um, so that he could get started at two. Because the weather is now starting to get more Scottish, we're going to be you know, less able to swim whenever we want and more dependent on weather windows. Anyway, you know, he's made nine miles on this tide, which was absolutely amazing. Uh, just getting, well, yeah, 20 to six. Um, so he's been swimming for the yeah, best part of four hours, mostly in the dark, raining, miserable, and, um, and not that warm. Tonight's a really good example of why the night swims are so important, because um, you know, if we don't take advantage of a, a window like this, then basically that's cutting down by 50% or more the amount of time that's available to him. And on the light side of motivation, it's been so good just having my family come out here from my mum, dad and girlfriend, just to kind of boost morale at key points. And this weekend is no different. I've just got a text message from my two brothers. They've just arrived, they're unpacking. This should be funny. <laughs> where, where, where did you get these from? <laughs> What's that? I dress normally. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Nice to you, mate. Right, <laughs> it lands quite hard uh, for me. You know, uh, I'm a seagull. But, um, I love the way you didn't batter an island this morning, mate. You're like, oh yeah, sure, Poseidon's here. There he is. We've got Popeye and Poseidon, Matt, to help me with the jellyfish. Perfect timing. Good timing? Yeah. Perfect. Let me know where they are, Matt. All right, and I'm gonna, I'll sort them out for you. Fucking <laughs> 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 Essentials? <laughs> We've got our first casualty of the Great British Swim. Everyone's gone to bed and have left always in charge of the boat. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> look, look, look out for look oil out. tankers, cargo ships, ferries, ferries. sailing boats, yeah. mermaids, and um, sharks. You see these little triangles? You gotta try and match them up. If that gets to three, we need to panic, I know that. Yeah, if we come away from our waypoint, yeah. then we have to wake up the real captain. <laughs> So guys, uh, it's that time of the week again where I go through social media and we find some of the most commonly asked questions and then we answer them. First question is from Tommy Miles who asks, what is your average swimming speed? It's a good question, um, although the answer is quite complex just because of tides, waves, currents, there's, there's so many external factors at play, which is why the Great British Swim is almost a liken to Edmund Hillary and him climbing Everest more than it is Michael Phelps in a smooth swimming pool, if that makes sense. Next up, William McCormack has asked, how has my body changed during the swim so far? Um, basically, I'm, I'm chubbier and I'm hairier. Um, which is a good thing, uh, just because the hair on my face is kind of protecting me from the Scottish jellyfish, um, just offering a little bit of armour around the chin. And body fat as well, kind of makes me a little bit more resilient to the cold and a little bit more buoyant as well. 
Um, still holding muscle mass, which I think is a good thing because it means that all the carbohydrates I store store as muscle glycogen. And I have an argument in sports science that I think that makes me a better endurance athlete, which is actually contradictory to a lot of conventional sports wisdom when it comes to endurance sports. And last year I had a body scan and they prodded and probed me and and basically said I had no physical attributes to be a long distance swimmer. So let's put it like this, this swimmer here, 40th percentile. Okay. And that means he carries more muscle for his height than 40%. Okay. Um, you carry more muscle than about 95%. <laughs> Right, you are going to sink like a stone in my in my estimation. Um, and a lot of people would say that I don't actually have a good body shape to swim around Great Britain. However, I would argue, how do you know? Because no one's done it before. So maybe my hobbit-sized sort of round frame is a good one to swim around Great Britain. We'll find out. Last up, Gavin Dempster says, "How do you do it? You're superhuman, Gavin." You're a legend. I really, really do appreciate that. And there's been so many really, really nice comments on social media. I honestly think we all have this just innate ability within all of us just to overcome severe hardship. You know, as humans have been doing it for thousands and thousands of years, it's why we're still here. So if anything, I think I have a superhuman ability to be stubborn and naive. And again, that, that sounds really weird, but in, in most of my adventures, I've just got by on those two things. I say, you know, be so naive that you start, but so stubborn that you finish. And just like remove that, that kind of barrier to entry, that stigma that it's something that you can't achieve. Basically, lace up your trainers, put your goggles on or get on your bike and, and just get on that start line. And honestly, I think you'll be amazed at what you can achieve. No superpowers, just naivety and stubbornness. Guys, it's been 58 days, not had a proper haircut. Uh, so Scott's rocked on out. Travel 400 miles? Yep. 400 miles. And this is going to be, we're calling it the Scottish Savage. Scottish Savage, yeah. I think because we've arrived in Scotland, we need a haircut that is fitting for our arrival. So I've given Scott free reign to do whatever he wants on my hair. Because we can go and swarm up the Scottish coast. Hands gonna go. I'll move it. Oh, that is amazing. That is so <laughs> Okay guys, that is it for this week. Um Scotland, you're amazing. Um you're cold. You're rough at times as well, uh, but you're amazing. And, and that's partly because of the people. The welcome has been just overwhelming, if I'm honest. The comments on social media since arriving, just just amazing. Honestly, I can't thank you guys enough. Also as well, it's just been such a boost in morale having my brothers up. And hopefully this episode has given you a little bit of an insight into the sort of mental techniques that I'll use to, to cope with some of the hardship throughout the, the whole Great British Swim. And it's been rough, it's been 58 days and it's not all been sunshine and dolphins, but if you can find anything within this episode to help you with your adventures, I'll consider it worth it. Um, I'm Ross Edgley, this is The Great British Swim, I'll see you next week. <laughs>